Now, have you ever wondered how to make a design similar to this with your clothing brand? There's some advanced tricks and puppet warping that you need to do in order to manipulate your images to get the sort of finesse and look of this graphic. Well, in today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do something similar to this for your clothing brand. So let's go ahead and get locked in. Considering this design is gonna be on a crop t-shirt, the width is gonna be 3000, the height is gonna be 3450 at a DPI of 300. Let's go ahead and drag in our image and then go ahead and use the pen tool set to path to cut out this image. Once you have your path connected, go to selection and then press okay. And now you have a selection and then mask it off and you have a cutout of your image. Next, let's import image two, which is going to be this barbed wire that I found off Google. It's just a PNG. And then I'm gonna go in with an eraser and remove the one that we don't need. So we just have one line of barbed wire. Now to manipulate this, head over to edit and then head over to pop it warp and then add in some anchors where you wanna warp. So one here, one here, and then you can go ahead and start warping this around. I love puppet warp because it allows you to manipulate your image dramatically without making it look a bit weird. Now that we have the general shape, we can go ahead and just duplicate this and then simply right click, transform and reflect. And now we have it on the opposite side as well for our handcuffs. For the meantime, we're gonna go ahead and turn these handcuffs off. And then we're gonna go ahead and go in with the stamp tool to remove the original handcuffs on this image. But firstly, let's convert this into a smart object and then we're just gonna to have to rasterize it anyway. But firstly, let's grab our stamp tool and then use option or alt to grab a selection of where you wanna copy. And then once you have that selection, you can go ahead and start brushing that in to remove whatever image or handcuffs that you wanna get rid of. Now, this is more than enough for what we need. So we're gonna turn the barbed wire back on and then add a layer underneath to draw in our shadow just to make it seem a bit more realistic. But again, I'm not taking this too seriously. This is not needed, but I'm gonna go ahead and add a mask and then go in with a brush that's set to dissolve and then add a bit of a blur to the top just so it's a bit faded because that's where we're gonna add our text. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and use puppet warp on the actual hands this time to bring them in because they look a bit odd when they're facing out that way. And now that they're in, it just looks a bit more visually pleasing and it's better for a t-shirt because a t-shirt's vertical and it's a rectangle. We're gonna go ahead and just group this all for the time being. So select it all and press Command G to group it and you can move it around, warp it, make it larger, whatever you want. Now, if you press T on your keyboard, you can go ahead and add some text within Photoshop. So a shortcut on that is just T and then just add whatever name or you know font that you want for your graphic, whether it's your brand name or by text. This one is going to be a by text. I'm just gonna put free them hogs. I like this font originally, but I wanted something a bit more vintage because that's the look that I'm going for. Now right click your text layer and head over into blending options. And now the blending options for this are gonna be fairly simple. Just add a stroke, make sure it's set to the outside this time, make it a bit thicker, set it to black and then make the fill. So color overlay and set this to white, make sure it's at hundred percent and press okay. Now the font for the main type is going to be this sort of look. I liked it because it reminded me of like old vintage, like logos that related to like justice warriors. And I just thought it looked cool. Now, I basically want you to rasterize your font and then select each individual layer using the magic wand tool and then right click and then new layer slash copy onto new layer. So magic wand tool, select it, right click it and then add to new layer because you're cutting out these letters. So that the reason why I do this is because I can go ahead and move each individual letter myself, therefore making the custom font and making it a bit more personal towards the brand. If you use just straight up a font and you don't go ahead and change it or manipulate it in any sort of way, that's kind of boring, especially when it comes to t-shirt designs. So this way, when you separate the layers and then move them around, pressing Command T for transform, it just gives you a better look and you have a bit more freedom as well. Next step, I want you to group everything together again and then convert this into a smart object. Once you have this converted into a smart object, I want you to go ahead and select the layers. And then from here, you can go to select, modify, and then the select modify, click border. Once you have border selected, add whatever width that you want. I'm just gonna go for a heavy width and now you have a sort of offset. With that still being selected, add in a new layer and fill that layer with whatever color that you have using the paint bucket tool. I'm just gonna select black and then fill that layer in with black. Do this multiple times so it doesn't come out blurry. So make sure you don't do this. Just make sure you select it again 
and use the paint bucket tool and click your mouse multiple times. That way it's not blurry. So after you follow those steps and make sure you fill it multiple times so it's more sort of like a solid instead of a gush and blur, go ahead and right click and head into the blending options of this new offset that we've made and now add a gradient, set it to whatever color you want. So not a, um, not a color overlay, make sure it's a gradient. And then for the color, I'm gonna go with the green and also make sure you add in a stroke and set it to the outside. But again, I'm using Map Pack 49 from our website and it allows me to make this effect very easily. Once that's done, turn your layer back on for the original font. And I'm gonna go ahead and just add in this AI generated image of a hog into this graphic, just cut it out and set it to the back. You can do whatever you want for the background of this. Again, this is not really shown in the graphic. It's just there to fill that empty void within the middle. And instead of having a landscape or anything like that, I just thought having a hog ties back into the brand name and it works perfectly. So again, I'm using the pen tool to cut this out. Once I have that all selected, I'll use the selection and just send it to the back. We'll go ahead and introduce a new layer. And for this layer, I'm gonna go ahead and make some fake flares. I just find making them from scratch is better. So just start by introducing an ellipse and filling that in with white. So that's just a selection using the ellipse. And once you fill that in with white, you wanna warp it so it resembles one of those little strokes from a flare. And then just blur it a little bit using gush and blur. So that's just effect gush and blur. Press OK once you're happy. And then I want you to go ahead and duplicate this and then just put it on its side so that way you're making a X. Once it's made an X, I want you to group that again and then duplicate it and now rotate it a bit so now it looks like a complete flare. Now all you have to do is convert that into a smart object and just duplicate it multiple times around your graphic. Again, I just wanna make the barbed wire look shiny and that's why I keep duplicating it all over the place. Now this, is, now this design is going to be in a black shirt, so I wanna go ahead and change my artboard color to black so it resembles whatever garment that we're making the design on. Now we're at this stage, we're gonna go ahead and add in a new layer. So make sure it's at the very bottom. And then we're gonna go in with the brush. I'm using the Wave and Water brush set. Again, I've shattered this out multiple times. I'm just gonna go ahead and make a back plate for our design, just so we have a bit more to fill the area without having to make this design too busy. I love doing this for these sort of designs because it reminds me of vintage graphics from I would say the 70s or even the late 90s that relate to brands such as Harley Davidson. They always used to have like this black back plate and it's also it just reminds me of old print because when you do print you have to print a white base first and that's basically what I'm kind of doing here but in a digital sense. Let's go ahead and group our graphic completely. And then we're gonna add in our first adjustment layer, which is going to be a curves. And I'm just gonna turn down the shadows a bit because the original image of the arms has more sort of gray shadows slash paper copy scan shadows. And I want them to be a bit darker. Now it's not one size fits all when it comes to curves. So adjust it to how your image looks like and how you want it to be. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and convert our whole folder into a smart object once I've duplicated it. So I'm gonna duplicate it, put it on top, convert that into a smart object and then go to filter, filter gallery. And I'm gonna go ahead and add some noise, not filter gallery, sorry, just filter and then noise and add some noise adjust it until I like it. Then I'm gonna go ahead and go into adjustments and add in a threshold. Now this is just to add in a black layer. So if we do screen print this, it looks a bit more professional when we have a layer just with solid blacks. Go ahead and add in a new layer, then go to select color range. And now once you're in color range, I want you to go ahead and drop down that select menu and make sure it's set to black and make adjustments if you want, but. Mine's already set to the perfect amount and just fill that new layer in with black as well. You can go ahead and delete the converted object that we've made of our original graphic. And now the design is looking somewhat complete. I went ahead and added in a new layer underneath the shadows layer and went in with a red brush just to add some uh, sinister looking eyes to this hog. 
Once again, we're gonna group this all. So select everything, Command G to group it. And then we're gonna go ahead and duplicate this, convert this into a smart object. Now we're gonna head into the final stages. So if we go into camera raw filter, we can go ahead and adjust it. So camera raw filter is basically what all the pros use to make any final adjustments to colors, textures, and even details within the grain. So if you go into this detail, I'm gonna go ahead and remove some of the noise and then add in some sharpening just to make the design pop a bit more. Again, I would recommend you go ahead and explore the camera raw filter. It's not just for editing photos. It's amazing for design because it allows you to get those final stages of your graphic looking nice and professional. Once you're happy, press OK. Next, I'm going to go ahead and add, add a mask to our complete converted smart object design. Next, I'm going to set the background to white again. And then I'm going to go ahead and select color range. This time I'm going to select black. And then I'm going to play with the actual range. Now, you don't want this to be too strong or too light because you want it to remove a lot of the detail in terms of the black, but not too much. And you should be here. Once you fill that layer in black with the mask, you remove your shadows and then add a black uh, artboard back in to see what your design is going to look like printed. And now this is literally one of the most important steps when you're making a vintage graphic, because I feel like when you do this steps and you don't print your blacks on a t-shirt, on a black t-shirt, it just elevates your graphic and makes it look a bit more professional because there's nothing worse than looking at glossy blacks on a black t-shirt. It just looks off. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and just export this and then add it into Illustrator. Now, whatever mockups you use, you can go ahead and place your graphic. Originally, I didn't wanna do a back design for this t-shirt because I thought a front design was going to be more than enough. But then I remembered the whole reason why I made this design was because of some by text that I wrote. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a simple back graphic within Illustrator real quick. Now, this is nothing complex. I just found this black letter font within my fonts and then adjusted it and then just warped it. So I just dragged it down so it was a bit more elongated. And then I went ahead and added the stroke and a color overlay and bam, we're done. Let me know what you guys think of the graphic. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Love you, peace.